Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to give you guys my review of DaVinci Resolve 15. So if you haven't already heard of DaVinci Resolve 15, it is a free slash paid video editor that competes very well with paid only video editors such as Adobe Premiere Pro or Sony Vegas. So I use the free version of DaVinci Resolve 15, and I can say after using it for a couple of years, including versions 14 and the newer DaVinci Resolve 15 version, it actually has most of the functions that you would expect in other top level editors. So the way that it does this is by splitting everything up into six different tabs here. So you have the media tab on the left, which allows you to do functions such as bringing in video clips into your project and keeping a list of directories or network locations over on the left without having to use your systems file explorer. One of the nice things about looking through your videos in DaVinci Resolve 15 is that you can hover over your clips and kind of scrub through them to see basically thumbnail instant screenshots of what's occurring in that video. So it becomes very easy to uh, remember what that video recording was without actually having to drop it onto the timeline quite yet. So you bring your files and you put them in the media pool down here below, and then they would show up on the edit tab. So once again, you have the media pool, the same media pool over here in the top left. So if you prefer not to use the media tab, you can use your system file explorer and drag your file straight into the media pool there. And from there, you select what you want and put it on the timeline. So pretty straightforward. You have access to unlimited video audio tracks, the ability to create subtitles up there. With the effects library, you have access to many video transitions, as you can see here. And I believe every last one of these transitions and titles are available in the free version as well. There's actually only a few select functions that you're not allowed to use in the free version. For instance, if I go to the open effects library, something like automatic dirt removal might not be allowed. So you can see there you've reached a limitation. Um, but generally speaking, when you're editing your videos, you don't run into that kind of thing. It's only for the very advanced or very specific effects that you would ever have that limitation. So aside from that, you also can add in third-party VST plugins. So you can see here I've installed the Reaper plugins on my computer. And uh, DaVinci Resolve also has built-in audio effects as well, such as noise reduction or adding a compressor on top of your video. Um, now, generally, you do the audio editing over on the Fairlight tab. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, one more thing I'll point out here about the Edit tab is that it's very easy to create keyframe animations. So for almost any property you have in a video, you can keyframe it by clicking on the diamond in the inspector for that property. So opacity or alpha, uh, if you want it to be partially visible, setting the zoom of a video clip or its position on the screen, if you want it to be offset to the left, up, down, or right. Things like that are very easy to modify the properties for, as well as having them animate across time by using keyframes, basically setting a value in two different parts of the timeline so that it can move between those values as time progresses. Um, so the edit tab, very nice. Uh, using the blade edit mode and the trim tool, it's very easy and responsive to make cuts to your video and to trim the edges of them so that your final cuts blend together quite nicely. And then you have a bunch of video transitions you can add on top of that. Of course, with the titles, you have access to some simple titles, which you can edit. A bunch of fusion titles, which you could recreate in the fusion tab if you desire. I would recommend that if you want to make a custom title that you would grab one of these fusion title templates, and then you can actually make some edits to them. So if you click on one, you'll see it kind of pops out here with some text. You can click on the inspector once again and modify a bunch of settings regarding those. But you can also go over to the Fusion tab. So on the Fusion tab, you'll be able to see all of the nodes for those 3D special effects. In this case, since it's a 3D title, it's all grouped together. But if we double click here, you'll see all of the nodes that go together in order to create that 3D title effect. So the idea of the Fusion tab and creating node compositions is that you can combine a bunch of components in order to create a more complicated final effect. So having something like this wouldn't be possible if you didn't have a light, but you would also need a text element to be able to merge them all together, to render them using a 3D renderer, and then to take it and output it to the final media out. Now, I'm not gonna get really into how nodes work here. There can be quite a learning curve, and I would recommend that you look at some of the built-in 3D title effects to get a better understanding of how everything ties together. But once you actually understand how it all works, you can generate some pretty powerful stuff. Also in Fusion, you can add things like 3D particle generators, 
3D shapes, you can animate your objects with keyframes just like you can on the edit tab. You can modify the look of any of your elements with color curves. You can kind of see those over here, hue curves and color curves. And you can also blur out one of your components as well if you want. So there's a lot of stuff you can do in the nodes tab and it's worth taking a look at that if you want to be able to generate some 3D visual effects in DaVinci Resolve without needing any external programs. So over on the color tab, you have access to things like lookup tables when you want to apply a quick look to one of your video clips. So also on the color tab, you have a bunch of tools for offsetting the color or the brightness of your video, things like that. Using color wheels down here, color curves over here to the right. So with color curves over here, you can do things like reduce the red in your video, which of course is going to make the green and the blues stand out a bunch more. There's also other curves such as hue versus luminance here. So you can modify the color depending on how bright part of your video is. So if I set a couple keyframe points here and I was to drag the colors up or down, you'll notice that it doesn't affect everything in this little video clip. Let me actually zoom in here a bit. But when I drag these points up and down, what you'll notice is that it actually modifies the luminance of certain parts of this video clip based on their color selection. Speaking of selection by color, you can actually qualify parts of your video. So if you actually want it to select only specific colors, you can use the qualifier tool to make a selection. And then by doing that, it's only gonna be modifying now areas that have this kind of hue, this level of saturation and this luminance. So if I do something like boost the gain way up, you'll notice, oh look, it makes it red, but only for those selected areas. So you can kind of imagine how that can get kind of interesting. And if you wanna make multiple changes to a single video clip, you can use this nodes editor to split your input into multiple intermediate clips and then merge them all together back at the end uh, for your final output. So that would be able to allow you to do things like split your video clip into multiple clips add some specific color changes and then merge them all together back at the end. So it's kind of similar to the fusion tab, but instead of creating 3D effects, you're now just talking about doing color effects, blurring effects and the like. You can also use power windows over here in order to track areas around your screen or to qualify out uh, areas around your screen. So for instance, you can use a circle and maybe you only want to qualify this region of the screen. And then later you can use the tracker tool to make it follow around a person's face, for instance. So those kind of things are possible within this tab. Uh, also blurring for uh, making something look very hazy, or you can also sharpen it as well. If you go over to the sharpen tool over here. And if you create a color look that you really like, you can also save it as your own LUT file. So you can do that by finding your clip, right clicking it and then doing uh, I believe generate 3D LUT, which will save it to a file and you can store it in the default file for where DaVinci Resolve keeps all of its LUT files. It's also possible to install LUTs from online. So with these LUTs, it's obviously gonna be possible to get a very different look for your video just by clicking on these and assigning them to your video clips. So that can be a very quick way to edit the look of your video. Um, on the Fairlight tab, you have access to the mixer over here. So with the mixer, you can add in input microphones and you can also add special effects to those microphones. So these are the same things you see in the effects library, including the Fairlight effects built into DaVinci Resolve. So you can have real time noise reduction on your microphone. You can also add in the third party VST plugins. So if you wanna use the Reaper filter, you can do that as well. And so with a microphone input, you can queue up your audio tracks for recording voiceovers and post-production. You also can use the sound library to add in special effects if you keep a database of sound effects. So this is compatible with PostgreSQL databases that you can create in DaVinci Resolve 15. I will say though, I haven't found things like the sound library to be particularly useful. And then over on the ADR tab, automatic dialogue replacement, you can create time frames for when a character should be speaking, write the lines in advance and do multiple takes of those lines, which is a cool concept. But to be honest, I have found it a little bit unclear on how to select the take that you want to keep once you have recorded it in ADR, because you usually do four or five takes for the same line. So finally, the deliver tab. Um, when you want to export your video, this is where you go. 
you can export part of your video as a in out range. So that would be where you hit I and O and you set a specific time range and you can add that to the vendor queue. So with a queue, you can actually have multiple jobs ready to render at once, which is great if you have multiple timelines or if you want to split one timeline into multiple videos, maybe you have a part one and part two, that can work out pretty handy. And then you can export all of those with one button rather than having to come back in after 10, 20 minutes and to re-export the next part. So as far as render settings go, you have defaults for doing things like YouTube videos. So this uses QuickTime.move, but the way that DaVinci Resolve compresses .move files is actually pretty good. So it's just fine to export a video from DaVinci Resolve as QuickTime or MP4. You also have a lot of other pretty weird formats, as you can see there. And you have some controls over the video quality there, the audio quality, and being able to set names for your files, of course. So we could just call this export one, add to render queue, and then when I was ready to actually go ahead and take this project and export it, you would just hit the start render button. So I don't want to make this a tutorial on how to use DaVinci Resolve so much. I just wanted to kind of point out where everything's at in the program and give you a little bit of insight into how usable the things are. So if you want to actually learn more about DaVinci Resolve, check out my channel, search through some of the DaVinci Resolve 14 and 15 videos. I've got a bunch up there on how to do a lot of the things I've been talking about in this video. But to give my final thoughts on reviewing DaVinci Resolve version 15, I would say hands down it's the best free video editor you're going to find. I still haven't bumped into another free video editor that has a easy to use interface and nearly as many functions as you're going to find in DaVinci Resolve's free version. So it will compete pretty well with other programs like Adobe Premiere Pro. So one thing I will say about the program that's kind of a downside though for many people is that if you're running on a mid-range or budget machine, you may run into a little bit of choppiness, not in the tools, but if you have too many video tracks in the timeline, it may not play back all that smoothly. You may get a little bit of choppiness in the timeline frame rate. Now that's not too unusual for a video editor, but I will say that my experience with Adobe Premiere Pro has been that it plays back the timeline a lot more smoothly. And that's a pretty big deal because when you are editing your video, the last thing you want it to be is slowing down and taking away from your valuable editing time. Um, so if you have a mid-range machine, so specifically I have a mobile gaming laptop with a 1050 Ti NVIDIA card, just to give you a little bit of perspective on uh, what I'm running it on. It runs pretty well, but not quite as well as Adobe Premiere. There is some choppiness issues with the app. So specifically with the new version 15 compared to version 14, it's really nice that they added in the Fusion node editor. So the Fusion tab allows you to create the 3D special effects, and that wasn't really even there in DaVinci Resolve 14. Also along with that, all of the Fusion titles are completely new to version 15. So that stuff didn't exist there before. Before, all you had was text. So I'm actually kind of looking forward to version 16 to see what they have next in store. And also, if you happen to be playing around with a Linux-based machine or a Mac, DaVinci Resolve 15 is also supported on those platforms as well. So if you can do a little bit of finagling on Linux, or maybe if you go to the Arch user repository where there's some nice install scripts, uh, you can get it up and running on those machines as well. So DaVinci Resolve is a really good free cross-platform editor that gives you most of its functions for free quite generously. And it blows most of the free editors away while being close to the other really popular premium tools such as Adobe Premiere Pro and Sony Vegas. So if you're looking for making YouTube videos or anything close to that, DaVinci Resolve 15 is definitely a cool tool to go ahead and check out. You can pick up the application on the Blackmagic Design website. I think it's blackmagicdesign.com slash downloads. I could be wrong about that. But aside from that, that's pretty much going to be it for this video. So I've been Chris. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at this review of DaVinci Resolve 15, and I will see you guys in my future video content.